crafty friends it's Jess from JessCrafts.com and today I'm here with a little gift bag from uh, an envelope featuring Neat and Tangled stamps. So this is the Neat and Tangled Berry Mary stamp set and I'm going to color all of the images from the stamp set as is kind of my personal routine like when I get a set of stamps I like to color all of the images one time just so I can kind of see the whole stamp set, take a picture of it, and have that as just like a reference point. Somebody over on Instagram, because I like to post these over on Instagram, asked if I do this for all my stamp sets and they thought that I left them on there, I think. Um, and I don't leave the these colored images on there as like an index. I just do it more for um, reference and I take a photo as an index. Then I put all of the images on cards eventually. And in fact, on my desk, I have a little bowl of stamped and colored images that are all cut out because I use my scan and cut to cut it all out. And to color this bear, I'm going to use E19, 15, and 13. It's a new E color combination for me personally. I color a lot of critters, so I like to have a lot of different choices in E markers. And I'd like to continue to expand my selection of e-colors, but since this is a new grouping for me, I find myself kind of tending towards it. And I also have E11, so I can go even lighter with it if I want. But I just like the sort of warm reddish tone. I think that it works well for a lot of animals and creates a nice effect on the cards. I'm going to use the E19 for the shadows. I'm going to put the shadows on where the scarf meets the bear because that would be casting a shadow onto him and I'm going to continue to just use that same sort of coloring method to get through the bear. I also like his snout. Traditionally the snout is viewed as lighter like you know people uh, color it they color it lighter but I'm going to make it darker just because it helps me to save time. I can color right over the lighter colors that I used for the rest of the bear and it helps to not have to color in the lines. It saves me a bit of time. So that's why I'm using E37 and E39 to just add a bit of shading to his snout. And I can do a similar thing to his belly or I can go in with a lighter color. A lot of times the snout and the belly are the same color when you see uh, clip art bear animals. If you're watching this the day that I post it, which is um, December 20th, 2017, there is a sale currently going on over at Neat and Tangled featuring some really great prices like you know full size four by six stamps for five or seven dollars more than 50 percent off and so if you love the style of this particular stamp set while this one is not on sale there are a few others in um, from the same illustrator that are on sale at a great deal so i'd recommend checking that out but of course i'll link all products in the video description below so I am using BG72, 75, and 78 to color in his scarf. I just really love the way that teals and blues combine with browns and oranges. So because it's such an orangey brown, I even particularly more like using the blue with it. It's not very traditional in Christmas colors, and I'm not going to particularly use traditional Christmas colors for my bear today just because or for my any of my coloring. Um, just because I like to kind of mix it up make something a little bit unexpected and I'm going to sort of slowly build up color. I have since taken an online class and you'll hear me talk about it again in another video where they do suggest going from darker to lighter to use less ink and I think that I have a problem where I'm trying to achieve a really smooth blend and so I'm putting down more ink than I really need to and sometimes you might just need to let it dry in between. When I originally created this card, it was, I don't know, over a week ago, and I thought I could maybe still squeeze it into the Coffee Lovers blog hop, which is since then over, but a really fun, uh, just a really fun hop, a lot of great inspiration, a lot of great prizes. And so I wanted to color the Santa coffee cup to, you know, kind of tie in the theme, but also because inside of this little gift bag, I'm going to put a Starbucks gift card for a coworker. Now she's already received this winter break has already started and I'm being thoroughly enjoyed. And that's why I'm able to release so many videos this week. So you're going to see, I'm sharing a bit more videos over the next little while, just because I'm on break <laughs> and, um, I'm coloring his skin with E00 and E02. 
two or not e11 e11 is what i actually even though e00 and e11 seem like they're like what do they have to do with each other they're really far apart i like that as a caucasian skin tone so i'm choosing to go with a caucasian santa this time just because the person i'm giving it to is caucasian um and I'm coloring his beard with some warm grays, very, very subtle, like a W00, just to add a touch of color because things that are white, if you leave them pure white, they just, they don't have any dimension. They're very flat. So just that little touch of W00 on the very edges gives the cup that rounded effect. So I, of course, I didn't color everything in the video because it would have taken forever, but I wanted to just give you a little bit of tips here and there. I do own coordinating dies for this particular stamp set because, as you can see, the bear can hold things. So the die cut that you buy from Neat and Tangled cuts the bear's hands, and therefore I can slip this inside of his hands, and, you know, to me that makes it worth it. When a die cut can let you do something special, I will invest in the dies. So I will slip the little santa mug down in between his hands and then i have all the other images and i love seeing how they look you know all colored up like that and i kind of have the idea that i'll see if i want to use them later to add more to the gift bag so i'm going to make a gift bag from an a2 size envelope starting with an a2 size envelope sealing it you could of course you know lick it sealed i'm just going to use some adhesive just so that it's nice and strong and I like this idea because a lot of us probably have envelopes on hand, but we may or may not have a tiny gift bag. And if you need something really quick in the next couple of days, it might be nice to be able to make something from your stash as opposed to having to go out and, you know, find or purchase something. I scored three sides of the sealed envelope at half an inch. And then the fourth side, I trimmed just the tiniest bit off of it just so that it would open the top of the bag and so that part that I trimmed is now the top and the other three sides are scored at a half an inch I'm going to assemble the bag later but I want to decorate the surface of course if you were trying to be quick you could put some pattern paper on this center panel instead and that is what I had to wind up doing for another co-worker gift because after you know doing something super elaborate and all this pretty coloring for this card, I kind of ran out of time, and so she got pretty colored images because I always have extra of those, but not quite the same fancy background. So this tree stencil is also from Neat and Tangled. I am masking off the edges of the bag so that I'm only working on the front panel of the bag with some 3M post-it note tape. And I'm also using the post-it note tape to mask off the trees that I don't want. So I'm only going to try to ink one tree at a time. And because I'm only inking one tree at a time, I want to use a smaller sponge dauber and not my Tim Holtz round blending tool that I use a lot with my distress inks. I'm using these finger daubers from scrapbook.com. Recently, they were featuring, you got three free finger daubers with every order for a while. Um, you might want to check it out, see if that's still going on. But if not, they, there's, you know, they have a really good price on the finger daubers and it allows you to give a little bit more control on a stencil application. So I masked off just the single tree. I came in with some picked raspberry distress oxide ink. Regular Distress Ink would give a very, very similar effect. There's no particular reason to use the Distress Oxides except for that here, the trees are going to overlap and because Distress Oxide Ink is pigment-based, they'll probably overlap a little bit differently than the dye-based Distress Inks, which might blend together more, but I really think either one could be used. I just use the Distress Oxide Inks because if I do get a smudge of ink somewhere where I don't want it, and I'm using worn lipstick. I'm using two different color pinks, so now I've switched to the worn lipstick. If you do get a smudge of ink where you don't want it, the Distress Oxide ink is a lot easier to pick up than the traditional Distress ink. So I can go in with my Tombow Mono Sand Eraser and erase part of the Distress Oxide ink just so much easier than if I were to use the regular Distress ink. And I'm going to create a group of three trees. Things tend to look better in odds. And it gets a nice frame around my bear. As you can see, I keep pausing and I put the bear into the scene just to see how I like it. 
obviously I'm again going very non-traditional because I'm using pink Christmas trees and I will say that is definitely influenced by my mom. She loves pink. She says pink is for every holiday and so she would adore pink Christmas trees and while this isn't for my mom, you know, I just, when I think of Christmas sometimes, I just think of pink because of her. So here I'm trying to kind of decide where I might be able to place a sentiment if a sentiment is going to still fit on my bag. Um, and what's nice about clear stamps is that you can sort of pull the stamp set around your uh, panel or whatever you're working on and get an idea of how it might look without having to stamp it down. So there I'm removing those post-it masks. Post-it note tape is very gentle, so I don't have to worry about my paper ripping. It is a little pricier, so I don't use it for everything. And these, the you know, the ones that I did use are still sitting on my desk so that I can use them on a future project. And it's not just a one and done waste of post-it note tape. I'm going to stamp the sentiment because after having looked at it, I felt like there was, you know, enough room. It did overlap the trees a little bit, but I said, if you know, I thought if I choose a really bold ink like this VersaFine Onyx Black ink, it will still be really visible and it kind of just made it easier to pick a sentiment from the set. Of course, if you don't like the size of the sentiment, you know, you go in your stash and find a sentiment that fits in your space. So now that I have the panel decorated, I haven't glued down the critters yet, and maybe I should have, but they, I think they're going to overlap the sides a bit, so I decided not to. I'm ready to assemble the bag, which is probably why most of you are watching this video. You want to see how do I make this bag. So I'm scoring those score lines, or sorry, I'm folding those score lines. I had originally um, just put the line there, but now I'm actually creating the fold. And I'm going to um, be pretty aggressive with it and fold it both ways just because I want a lot of flexibility. I want to make sure those folds are really going to be able to move around. And then I'm going to put my hand in the bag and smush out the bottom fold till it lays flat and it creates two little ears. They kind of look like cat ears or owl ear tufts. And I push out so that there's those little tufts. Then I push in the sides of the bag. So the bottom of the bag is flat. The sides of the bag are currently flat, but are actually gonna be accordion folded in. And I'm putting a little bit of adhesive onto those little cat ears. Now, my tape gun was not good for the job. I don't recommend the tape gun. I do recommend dry adhesive, like a glue dot or something small like that, just because with liquid glue, it's gonna be harder to hold those in place. So I have the flat bottom of the bag, the little ears with tape. And here's where I've given up on my tape runner and realizing it's not going to work and I've just trimmed down a bit of tape instead and put a little triangle. Elizabeth Crafts tape, the double-sided tape is good for many, many purposes. It's a really, really strong adhesive. It's good for putting behind die cuts and other intricate things as well. So I'll put down two little triangles, peel them up, struggle way too much with it. Probably should have sped this up a little bit more since you guys don't need to really watch me tape things, but hopefully it gives you an idea of the structure of the bag. So I press the little ears down to the bottom of the bag and now I have basically just a 3D rectangle, but those folds, which are you know the originally the edges of the envelope, can go, can fold in a bit and give a little bit of shape to my bag so that I can pinch the top of it closed. It's actually a really simple thing to do. It might be a little bit hard to visualize, but I say, you know, just go for it. Make the quarter inch folds. If worst case scenario, you waste an A2 size envelope, maybe use a cheaper envelope for the first one to experiment with. What is super important is that the fold you make on the three sides has to be the same. You can't fold one inch on one side and one and half an inch on the other. If you want to make a smaller bag that's wider, you can fold it three quarters or an inch, but all the score lines need to be the same width. And then I've decided just to put a whole bunch of the critters on the card or on the bag because I colored them all. So why not go for it? Why not create a really fun little scene? And again, this is a gift bag, so it might get tossed. And I guess that would be kind of a bummer after spending all that time coloring, but I'm not going to know that. And I enjoyed the coloring process. So I use my bone folder to stick it in the bag and help press down the little images that I put on there. I did use my ATG gun just because it's a super strong adhesive. You could use whatever 
adhesive is works well for you. I will say again, I don't think liquid glue would be a great idea just because you'll want to hold it down for a while. And with the dimension of the bag, it might kind of pop off if it's not fully dry. Then to seal up my bag, you see I had a little Starbucks gift card there. I stuffed a little bit of tissue paper inside as well, just to give the bag a bit of dimension since the gift card itself isn't really filling the bag. But I think this is a great coworker gift, neighbor gift, but also if you have some people in your life that you're just going to give a gift card to, this would be fun and you could throw a little bit of candy inside with it to help fill the bag. And I am going to put some twine through two holes in the top of the bag to seal it with just a little bow there. You could, um, of course, just uh, staple the bag shut or just fold over the edges and put a little washi tape. But I just wanted to add something a little bit fancier. I know that the person that I'm giving this to will um, kind of enjoy the little details. So I'm just going to put a double length of twine. So there's two strands of twine and then tie it into a very simple bow. When I tie bows, I just tie it like I tie my shoes. I don't do anything super fancy. And then my bag is all sealed up and my project is done for today. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're interested in more crafting tutorials, be sure to subscribe to my channel. I'm going to leave you links in the video description below to the products that I used and to Neat and Tangled in case you're watching the day it's released and you want to check out those great deals. Thank you so much for watching. Have an awesome day. Bye.